So if you see someone drawing an atom, you might have seen this old model. It's really cool. It's a nice graphic representation. But from Chem 161, you'll probably learn that this is an old-fashioned way of seeing this. So it's not like the nucleus is the sun and all the electrons are like little plants that orbit it. So this is an outdated model. And the thing about the nucleus is that it's surrounded by electrons, but these electrons are buzzing around them in electron clouds. Now, if you've taken chemistry, you've probably heard about things like orbital shapes. Do I really, is that really relevant for our class? Not so much for our class, but well, you should know that electrons are always kind of buzzing. And I like this little gif right here. So what happens here, you see all these electrons. So they're kind of swarming this nucleus. So they're not orbiting it. They're kind of around these nucleus and they're flitting in and out. So electrons also involve probability and don't get too far into the weeds with chemical quantum mechanics. If you're studying things like quantum mechanics, then you're going way too far for the, beyond the scope of this class. But sub subatomic particles, you need to know the very three elementary subatomic particles in terms of like uh, what makes up the uh, atom. So we have our protons, our neutrons, and our electrons. If you're going to things like quarks or string theory, you're going way too beyond the <laughs> scope of this class. You just need, this is the smallest you need to know, protons, neutrons, and electrons. So protons have a positive charge. So they have a positive one charge and their weight is a one mass unit. And where do you find protons? You find them in the nucleus of an atom. Now neutrons, they are neutral. They don't have electrical charge, so they have zero charge. They're equal in weight to a proton and they're also found in the nucleus. Now electron, there's no, so it's not an electron, it's just, net, but the electrons are negative. So they have a negative one charge and compared to protons and neutrons, they are very tiny. So even though in that previous picture of showing electrons, very, very big and about the size of a proton, in reality, they are super tiny compared to a proton or neutron. So proton, yeah, almost over 1800 times the mass of a electron. And these surround the nucleus. So you find protons and neutrons, which are relatively big, in the nucleus, protons are positive, neutrons are neutral, and negatively charged electrons, they're buzzing around a nucle uh, nucleus. So this is a summary of the subatomic particles. Now let's talk about atomic structure. So what is the nucleus? Well, whenever you refer, so the thing about the term nucleus, at the atomic level, we're talking about the inside of an atom. And nucleus is one of those words where it has multiple definitions compared uh, depending on the context, like the nucleus of an atom is different from the nucleus of a cell. They're talking about two different things, and I think you will have, like, at least by the end of this whole course series, maybe four different definitions of nucleus. This is one of them. So protons have a positive charge, and then it's also found in the nucleus along with neutrons. So entire this entire structure together, when you have protons and neutrons forming a central structure, this is called the nucleus. Now these electrons, these are in those electro, those electron shells and clouds that surround the nucleus, and these have a negative charge. And again, I'm not showing it to scale here because if you look at the previous numbers, if I showed this to scale, you wouldn't be able to see the electrons on in this image. But for simplicity, for clarity's sake, I'm showing the electrons oversize in this picture. So you have electron shells. Now, do I want you to know how, if, if you're studying valence shells, I think that's a little, I mean, I think, I know it's mentioned in the book, but I think it might be a little beyond, like, do you need to know how many electrons are in each orbital shell? That's more of a Chem 161 thing. What I want you to know is what electrons do, especially in terms of bonding and ionics, or, and, um, yeah, and ions, not ionics. <laughs> All right, so then atomic elements. So what is an atomic number? Well, the atomic number is what defines an element in terms of on the periodic table. So the number of protons in an atom, it represents the atomic number of an atom and therefore the element. So when you look at the periodic table, you might see symbols like this. Well, this is atomic symbol, this abbreviation over here. This is the full element name. And this number over here, is it just labeling it in an arbitrary order? No, that number actually means something. That number is the number of protons. So 
Here we have the full name, here we have the element symbol, and this is the atomic number. So this is a cartoon showing the structure of helium, and hey, how many protons does it have? It has two positive particles, right? So number two is refers to the number of protons. So every single element on the atomic or the periodic table, this number over here represents the number of protons in that atom. If it's a different, if an atom has a different number of protons, it would be the next number in the sequence. So what if you could change, like say you had a very very expensive particle smasher or some accelerator that cat can actually change the number of protons in the atom. What would that do to the atom? Well, the thing is that here we have carbon and carbon with an atomic number of 6. Or let's ask the chat. So carbon has an atomic number of 6. How many protons does carbon have? The chat has consensus that it's 6 and the chat is correct. So again, that's your atomic number. Therefore, that's the number of protons. Okay, so carbon, where can you find carbon? You find carbon in your body, but these are other forms of carbon as well. Here we have a presumably graphite, and here's a diamond. So if, you're, if you want to get very persnickety about things, yeah, there's hydrogen atoms helping out with the outside of the structure, but most of the structure of this is carbon, especially on the inside. Okay, so what we have here is that if you add this, what if you added a proton to carbon? Would it still be the carbon? No, it wouldn't be carbon anymore, right? Because that changed the number. Therefore, you would, if you change the number of protons in an atom, that would change the element. So now we have nitrogen with the atomic number of 7. And nitrogen, where can you find nitrogen? Well, actually, it's around 70% of the air we breathe is nitrogen. And here, it, now, it, this used to be in Alamoana, but now they it shut like several years ago. If you're able to eat this, like, they, what they did was mix in like liquid nitrogen with ice cream or like some sort of cream to make ice cream. But the thing is that nitrogen is uh, typically found, at least pure nitrogen, in a gas form. Now then, the thing is like, is nitrogen the same as carbon? No, it's a, it was in a gas form, right? Say you add another proton to nitrogen, what would you get? Would you still have nitrogen? No, now you have oxygen. Is oxygen the same as nitrogen? Can you survive on nitrogen alone and breathing nitrogen alone without any oxygen? Nope. But oxygen is the one all our cells need if, in order to perform aerobic re respiration and keep up with our energy demands. So, or if you're not getting enough oxygen, well, you need, might need a supplemental oxygen. Oxygen is essential for human life. So the thing with protons and elements, protons determine your elements, and different elements have different properties. Carbon is not the same as nitrogen, nitrogen is not the same as oxygen, oxygen is not the same as carbon. They have different amount of protons in their atoms, they have different properties in terms of their chemical and physical properties. So again, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, different atomic numbers, diff totally different properties. Another way to think of it, another mnemonic, is protons determine an element's personality. So again, the number of protons very important for determining the properties of an atom. Okay, so then we have our element name. So here's the essential elements for fill one for one and one for two. And there is, a, even though it seems kind of random, I kind of organize them by their frequency in the body and how much we cover them or refer to them in physiology and anatomy of physiology and medicine. So these are more like trace elements or things that, or actually fluoride is more, if you're going to like pharmacology or if, if you're going to dentistry or, but yeah, the thing is like, these are all kind of going by frequency and how often these elements come up. But you should know all of them in terms of like, not only their element symbol, do you need to know their atomic number uh, you should know what an atomic number is. Now, I'm not going to ask you, okay, what's the atomic number of magnesium? That's kind of like a little more like nice to know. You probably need to know that for Chem 161, but for Phil 141, not really. But you should know the full name of all of these elements I listed right here.